I, I thank my colleague. Um, uh, Mr. DeMarco, I just want to take a moment. We're approaching the noon hour. Uh, we have a few more uh, witness, uh, members that want to ask questions, but I just want to take a moment of personal uh, privilege and, and uh, say thank you for serving as a human shield uh, this morning. I know it's been tough, but we, we certainly thank you for your service. Um, thank you, Mr. Uh, with that, Mr. Gowdy, uh, the subcommittee chairman, uh, Mr. Gowdy is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Haldeman, why did the enterprise enter a conservatorship? The enterprise entered a conservatorship in uh, September 2008 uh, because of the se severe economic stress our company was under and, in the words of Secretary Paulson, felt a timeout was necessary. Well, do you agree with Mr. DeMarco? Because in his testimony, he said it was a series of poor business decisions that led to the conservatorship. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? Um, in, in my tenure at, at Freddie Mac, I've tried very hard to... I'm, I'm, I'm not asking about that. I'm asking about decisions that led up to the entering of a conservatorship. It's a very simple question. Were there poor business decisions that led to that? The answer is obviously yes. I mean, we can have this exercise as long as you want to have it, but the answer has to be yes, right? Or else there wouldn't have been a conservatorship. It's uh, difficult for me to say that because I don't want to second-guess my predecessors. Well, we are paying you a handsome salary because you're supposed to be an expert in the field, and you're not going to second-guess your predecessors? It's because it's um, very difficult to say what, you would have done, what one would have done at that point in time given those, those circumstances and pressures that they were under. So you can't think of a single poor business decision that was made prior to 2008? Um, I can uh, talk about some decisions that were made that uh, I hope I would do differently, but I'd prefer uh, not to characterize them as poor business decisions. Well, Mr. DeMarco, it's, it, it's your language, poor business decisions. What specifically did you mean by poor business decisions yeah. by his predecessors? Because he's obviously reluctant to go into that. Hopefully you will not be as reluctant. Mr. Gowdy, both Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac reduced their underwriting standards, allowed much greater risk in terms of the mortgages that they uh, purchased. They reduced the uh, guarantee fees, the, the insurance that they were charging for this, and they made investments in private label mortgage-backed securities that, while at the time were all rated by private credit rating agencies as AAA rated securities, clearly we have seen that there was substantial risk in those, in those uh, instruments. And so these are business decisions made by the executives of, of those companies at the time to make, time to make period? these decisions. This is largely occurring in the period from 2005 to the first half of 2008. Who was Daniel Mudd? He was the CEO of Fannie Mae during this period. What was his total compensation? I don't know off the top of my head, sir. So you wouldn't disagree if it were $12 million? That could be right. How about Richard Siren? Who he was, was the CEO of Freddie Mac. Uh, during what time period? Um, I'm not sure, but it ended at the time of conservatorship. Exactly. 2003 to 2008. Now, what was his total compensation for that time period? Again, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know that. Would you disagree with me if I told you it was more than $38 million? I could believe that. All right. So surely you can understand the frustration of taxpayers who are paying bonuses while the bus is driven through the gates of hell, right. and then you want us to pay bonuses while the people change the tires. Yeah. I can certainly understand the frustration, and the committee doesn't know me very well, but I've been a career civil servant my entire life, and most of that career service has been in policy positions in which I have tried to advise policymakers, including numerous Congresses, of the risks to the taxpayer in the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac model. It gives me no satisfaction or pleasure to be sitting here as conservator of these companies at this point, seeing the devastation of the American taxpayer that's resulted when I spent the better part of my career trying to warn policymakers of the risks that were inherent in the structure that was in place pre-conservatorship, and it's why I would like to end this hearing with the same plea that I began at the beginning. I would like for FHFA and is ready to work with the Congress and the administration to bring these conservatorships to an end and to build a more robust, sound housing finance system well, for the future. Well, I want to ask you about that. Who was James Johnson? 
James Johnson was the CEO of Fannie Mae prior to Dan, uh, back in the 1990s. And what was his total compensation during that time period? It was substantial, sir. I don't know. $100 million. Right. Now, he had a good working relationship with Congress, right? Yes, he did. Okay. Now, Franklin Raines, what was his total compensation? I don't know, sir. Would you disagree if it were more than $90 million? I then he I had a good working that. relationship with Congress. So right. sitting here simply saying that we need a better working relationship with Congress, one could argue that's what got us into this abyss. I'm sorry, I, I don't recall saying having a better working relationship with Congress. I thought I said I've heard you mention the word Congress a half dozen times. And Mr. Chairman, if I could have 30 more seconds, the graveyard is full of people who are waiting on federal judgeships that never came. And I've heard the argument time and time again that we have to raise compensation levels for federal judges so we can attract the right kind of people. And yet every time there's an opening, there are 100 folks that are dying for it. They'll take a tremendous cut in pay. Now, I find it bitterly ironic that the total compensation for the United States Supreme Court justices is less than either of these two men made. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Connolly, uh, uh, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and uh, thank you to our witnesses for being here today. Um, I know you uh, would like to do nothing better than be here today uh, before this committee. Um, Mr. DeMarco, if I understood your testimony, you make the argument that putting aside histrionics, putting aside public opinion, even putting aside the opinion here in the Congress, uh, the problem, the challenge you face is that uh, a substantial number of the mortgages of the United States are tied up in these two organizations, and you've got to find competent, highly qualified, skilled managers willing to, uh, uh, to manage at Freddie Mac and, and, and Fannie Mae, and therefore you have to uh, give a nod towards sort of uh, what the marketplace offers in terms of skilled managerial leadership and thus the compensation we're looking at. That's correct, Congressman. Would you agree, though, that given the fact that these are GSEs, uh, given the fact that the taxpayer has invested very heavily now directly in trying to uh, straighten the ship of state for both Freddie and Fannie, that transparency rules might be a little different for these two organizations than for a private commercial entity on Wall Street? Um, I think that there can be uh, allowance for greater transparency, yes, sir. Well, allowance for, uh, as a public servant, as a fellow public servant, what, in your view, where is that line? I mean, so presumably several, that several line things. is different than a private entity, a purely private entity on Wall Street. So what do we as policymakers here in the Hill and, and what, more importantly, does the public have a right to expect by way of transparency in compensation packages and policies? Well, with res I, I believe that these companies are continuing to operate as private companies, as SEC registrants, and the public is in certainly entitled to know, uh, to have the same disclosures of uh, compensation of the executives as is of other firms, and that is done. And furthermore, we have detailed, the FHFA has detailed the executive compensation program and structure that's in place for these companies. But we go beyond that with respect to disclosure, and we provide numerous reports to the Congress on the conservatorship operations, both in terms of detailing the sources of the losses that have led to these taxpayer draws and detailing the, uh, the activities that are underway at both companies to uh, assist homeowners. Mr. DeMarco, uh, uh, you are familiar with the Inspector General report that was actually critical with the compensation system, and I quote, FHFA has neither developed written procedures to evaluate the enterprise's recommended compensation level, the enterprise is referring to Fannie and Freddie, right. each year nor required agency staff to verify and test the means by which the enterprise calculate their recommended compensation levels. Do you disagree with that finding? I am familiar with the finding and I can explain it, but yes, sir, I am familiar with it. We have agreed to uh, take the recommended remediation that the IG had in its report. So you are going to have written procedures? We will have written procedures. When might we see such written procedures? I have assured the Inspector General we will have those in place by the end of this year in time for the review of the coming year's 
um, given the given the uh, ostensible inadequacies identified by the IG, um, uh, why wouldn't we have a little bit less confidence that the compensation programs, bonuses, and other compensation, given the lack of transparency, lack of clear criteria and policies, lack of written policies, why should we have faith that that's just the ticket? That's what we need to make sure we're getting the right people to manage Fannie and Freddie. So it's a fair question, Congressman. But the, the companies themselves would disclose the uh, the scorecards and the ratings on them. What the IG was referring to was within FHFA, the FHFA internal review process. These scorecards did not have written procedures as to how that should be done. The IG did not say we didn't have a process. He said we did not have one documented, and he's quite right about that. And I believe that that's a, a proper control system, and we've agreed to put that in place. With regard to the calculations themselves. This is the IG saying, well, you've delegated to the companies to undertake normal day-to-day -day operations, including calculating pay, but we think with regard to these executives, you ought to send an FHFA examiner in there to recheck the calculations that have been done uh, to, determine the, to determine the pay. Um, we've agreed to do that. One final question, if the Chairman will allow. Um, uh, this uh, committee, uh, Mr. Cummings specifically, re uh, on behalf of uh, uh, the minority at least, requested uh, copies of compensation agreements from your office. We received recently heavily redacted copies of documents. Is it your position that this committee is not entitled to see the actual unredacted compensation agreements involved with Fannie and Freddie? Uh, sir, um, uh, this has to do with uh, distinguishing people who are named executive officers and those that are not, and it's trying to respect the privacy rights of those people. But we have provided the committee, I believe, with a great deal of information detailing uh, the individual executives at the company and the, and the compensation that's being paid. W would the gentleman yield? Oh, of course, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. DeMarco, the majority feels that you have been generally forthcoming, but we would ask, would you be willing to provide all compensation packages that include bonuses with the names redacted, however, with, if you will, numbers that could be referenced when we are going through the skill set, so that the gentleman, although he's, you are very right, we don't need to know the names of every individual, we want that respected, we would appreciate it if, if we could go to compensation levels far below a normal 10K level, and I think that's what the gentleman would like to see. Quite correct. Yeah. We, we will provide that. Thank you. I thank the Chair. You are very welcome. We now